Hello everyone, and finally we can bid you welcome back to the Kingsman film series commentaries. And today we are doing 2021's prequel to the series, The King's Man, starring Ralph Fiennes. And uh, once again, directed and co-written by Matthew Vaughan, who seems to have at least got off his meds this time. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Okay, yeah, this is The Kingsman, to which I have, well, there's been a lot of mixed reception to. On the one hand, most people seem to agree that it's better than Golden Circle. On the other hand, being better than Golden Circle is about the equivalent of jumping over a half-inch deep puddle. It's not particularly hard. Also, this is a lot better than that. Also, at least as far as, you know, my opinion goes. Also, it did not exactly generate a lot of hype, apparently, given the fact that on a budget of 95 to $100 million, it only made $125.9 million. Not to say it now, didn't, now, not to say it didn't have competition along the line here and there, but all the same, you know companies do tend to focus on how well it sells here and there. Yeah, 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 it's biggest competition, West Side Story. Which, to be fair, that was a phenomenal movie. Great job, Steven Spielberg. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to get started now. Um, start before the 20th Century Studios movie. Yes, the film's production took so long to get started, it changed hands midway through. And I'm not, I'm talking about production as well. Not just, you know, the big parent overlooking things when Disney bought out Fox. Yeah. <laughs> okay, three, two, one, go. Now mind you, Shiroi, I'm not saying that I doubt your opinion on this matter. I do wonder, though, if your opinion may have been shaped by the fact that Golden Circle was just that much a piece of crap that anything better afterwards seemed like gold. Or did no, you just... Not at all. Oh, okay, then, so you legit like this one, then. All right. Yes, I do. All right, let's have a look. We roll the dice. Yeah, 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 rolling the dice. That's what Disney did when they bought Fox. Yeah, don't, don't worry. I'm going to um, do my best to refrain from uh, making the obvious Disney jokes. I probably won't succeed, but, um, yeah. So, how exactly... We heard the story in the first movie of that Harry described of how the, how the Kingsman Agency came into being. Well, now we get to see it. In South Africa, of all places... Of the Red Cross, and um, oh yeah, that the, the actor the actor who keeps popping up in a lot of franchise stuff, Gmon Hounso. Oh, hey, Ralph Pretty Fiennes. sure I watched that name. Yep, we got Voldemort as a, as a hero in this movie. Well, he well, did. Well, he did play Alfred as well. So you're telling me he actually has a nose? Yes. Yeah, I know. Amazing, isn't it, Roy? Oh, yeah, and it's also kind of funny. This film, at least in the UK, um, this film came out three months after No Time to Die, in which Ralph Fiennes was also in it, because, you know, he played then. Huh. All right, now this is a time period of which I'm not too familiar. Great security you got. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Okay, this actor, I swear I've seen him before, but I can never recognize him. He looks like a younger Ian McKellen. <laughs> What's the name of the character? General Boars. Let's see.
Lord, um... I mean, while well, Lord Kitchener, at least, is played by Charles Dance. Mm -hmm. by the General Boars. Um, are you sure about that? I mean, you probably left you in that car for a reason. Yeah, that's a thing. It's like, it's a, I think it's easy to name a franchise that Hal Zoo hasn't been in. <laughs> Is it the MCU, the DCEU, this... Yeah, Kitchener, that's his name. Uh, so that is Charles Dance. I thought I recognized him from somewhere. Uh, oh. Oh, dear. But the base is now under attack. Dead. Oh boy. Don't worry. Oh yeah, that actress. She's in that. She, she was um, child or younger from Downfall. Oh. This is why they tell you to keep your hands and feet inside the ride. Well, crap. Is this um was this the, was this the alternate bad ending to downfall in which a character died or something? <sighs> Thought I recognized the one I saw the movie first, I just couldn't place it. And a British accent's not that bad to be fair, considering her the actress is German. Oh, um, got some About bad that. news for you, honey. And thus, with one last promise to his wife, she dies. One that he sure can keep. Yep. I mean, I mean, I mean, be fair, Shuri. He tries his hardest to keep it. Yeah. Don't, don't you go out! Dramatic. No, no, conveniently enough, they're not gonna shoot the child. I yeah. guess the attack is over now, because it was just that one sniper. Yeah, I think, I think, I think they, they got were... what they wanted. Yeah. I, 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 actually, I thought they were gunning for, um, the, for, for, for Ralph Fiennes. I think they were, yeah, but... Was it just the one sniper? Apparently. Hmm. Not more than that. Well, I mean, it was just that one guy we saw get stabbed, and that was it. And no, I'm not going to make a Humpty Dumpty joke. Twelve years later... We have these planes. Oh, goody, just in time for World War One. Hey, I recognize that building. Also, I don't remember at this point, but uh, what were your opinions on this, Dwibs? Um, I remember enjoying it a lot more than um, than Kingsman um, than Kingsman Two because I felt like Matthew Vaughn got off whatever drugs he was on making that film. So now, Comrade has all grown up, while Ralph Fiennes hasn't aged a day. Amazingly so. <laughs> so um, now um, Comrade is played by Harris Dickinson. Hmm, 
where have I heard that name before? Harris Dickinson. He was in um he was in an FX series called Trust. And he was in Maleficent Mistress of Evil. Ah, that's where I've seen him from. Is that the first movie or the second the one? Second, second one. Okay, I have not seen that. He played, I haven't seen it either, but he played Prince Philip. Yeah. And um, we got, we got uh, Gemma Arterton as Polly Watkins, the loyal maid. Going for a Princess Which, Leia hairstyle there, I see. So, at the very least, she's in a better spy movie than Quantum of Solace. Oh, don't you see? His son can't see war if he never knows about the war. We'll just keep this lie up forever. Attack. I hope he's not alcoholic, because you're on duty, aren't you? It's probably alcoholic. <laughs> So, um, so the more you fear something, the more it will come true. So, um, so the more I fear, um, a really bad, um, Mario game comes out, the more it comes true. The guy playing Shaw, was he in Guardians of the Galaxy, by chance? <laughs> Do you want Hounsou? Yes. I thought he looked like that guy. He was also, um, the elderly, uh, Shazam. Ah. Uh. Good job she's accurate with that gun. She really just came in with, with like, you don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Pretty much. Yeah, well, there's the other franchise that originated that now. Hmm? Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. We don't talk about statesmen. Well, not until they get their own spin-off movie, which is apparently a coming. I wouldn't mind that, to be honest. Yeah, neither would I. Like, the statesmen were honestly the best thing about Golden Circle. I thought it was Mark Strong. Huh? Yeah, Mark Strong was Merlin. Eh, the stupid stuff they did with Merlin in that movie offset his awesomeness, sadly. You know, I did make a promise to your mom. So basically, we're um, going full um, Fire Emblem Free Houses on Nobility. Uh huh. Oh, you see, you've played Free Houses. I played a bit of it, but I know about the whole, you know, how they how the acquired nobility sucks thing. Whereas, um, in the, whereas we're, we're the ones trying to um, purify the name back into really being noble. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Alright, so we got Morton. Let me find his actor. Um, Matthew Good. Mm hmm. Um, <laughs> it depends what you mean by shoot. <laughs> I mean, they're they're going to shoot something. Bozos, yeah. of course. What? Nah, he'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Just just take him on a nice um, on a nice horseback horseback carriage ride through the road. Just make sure that roof is up. Come on, Matt. we're going on holiday. Not here. Obviously. It'll be fine. This is where the um, this is where the main villain of the movie resides. Yes. But first, Rasputin. Play by Reese Ethan. So yes. some Welsh uh, representation for you, Shiroi. Uh, you need to think a little further up north. Um, he's from, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rasputin's obviously Russian, but we have a guy from Haverford West, um, playing yeah. him. Yeah, 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 Um, it's the guy playing him who's Welsh, Roy. Oh, I thought you were talking about, like, the goats and stuff. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. Now, aside from, um... Aside from Amazing Spider-Man One and uh, No Way Home, um, he was also he also played Mycroft in um, the Elementary series. Hmm. I'll be honest. I thought I thought this guy was David Tennant. And it does sound like David Tennant a bit. Well, David Tennant when he's not playing either the Doctor or um, or um, Kilgrave. <laughs> oh, Daniel Daniel Brühl as well. He's he plays um he plays the main villain second in command, Eric Jan Han Han Hanusen. So who's actually playing the shepherd here? That is a surprise. I mean, at the very least, um, at the very least, you know, uh, yeah, you know, that was the saddest thing. What? Um, Brawl's character here is more easier to understand than the one he played in, in, um, in Civil War. So uh, yeah, Archduke Ferdinand was actually assassinated by in a cons in a conspiracy 
led by a um, led by a by a Scottish madman. Hmm. That sounds like the kind of insanity I expect from this franchise. Oh yeah, right. well, well, yeah, yeah. There's, there's your shoots, <laughs> bomb inside a camera. Okay, there was a minor composer change for this movie compared to the previous two. Henry Jackman isn't involved in this film. Mm -hmm. But uh, Matthew Margeson, who did the previous two, was. He just shares composing duties with Dominic Lewis. Neat. So we got the Archduke Ferdinand, played by uh, Ron Cook, who was Parker in the Thunderbirds movie. Hmm. Yep, positive. But, uh, wow. Great instincts. Shame it may have blown up the car right behind them. Well, I mean, I mean, to be fair to them, at least the Archduke didn't get blown up. Oh, I mean, look, they all survived. Fine. I mean, it was knocked until, like, the very, you know, foot of the car, so it's probably fine. Thank God they didn't go off of the mentality that every car is a Pinto. So there you go. Crisis averted. Just like in For now. real life. For now. Ooh. Yeah, like, he's not exactly as sheltered as you want him to be after seeing something like that. And he has no comeback for that. Well, I mean... Well, I mean, yeah. he wasn't wrong. It's It was pretty harsh to say, but, you know. Yeah. So, um... That did not go well. Cyanide pill... Well, hang ah. on, he's got another shot. Must be your lucky day. And he's gonna take every opportunity. He's, I still got my chance. Okay. Well, I mean, at least you have to. Um, at least you have to pull the pill. Point blank. But uh, yeah, too late. Bad luck. And just when we thought we averted it. You know, that's the ironic thing in real life. This is more or less how it happened. An initial assassination attempt was attempted, didn't go so well, then some random guy just sees the Archduke and his wife with the top of their carriage down, mind you, and just goes, eh, well, YOLO, and literally just takes them out. Oh. Mm hmm mm hmm So basically, they learn nothing from their childhood, and they're still as immature <laughs> as that, that, now as they are then. 
That's a... They never got off. George. They never got over their feud, so now it's literal war. <laughs> well, King George, um, King George is apparently somewhat mature enough. Mm. Let's hope so. Got uh, Tom Hollander playing uh, playing King George. You might know him, Jover, as the main villain of Pirates of the Caribbean 2 and 3. Uh, Beckett? Yeah. Wow, he looks different here. And he also plays um, the Kaiser and the Tsar. Yeah, so they're three cousins who pretty much look alike. Well, yeah, because they're played by the same actor. And of course, Zemo over here is constantly egging him on. Hmm, so he's not entirely unlike um, Zemo. Definitely. I mean, you did that enough when you were a child anyway. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, hmm? Okay, zoom in and out on mustache. Mustache transition. <laughs> that was a thing. Yeah. It's very interesting transitions, I must say. Ah, uh, yes, World War One mentality and the idiocy that came with it. Yep. They uh, didn't get the memo about the guns. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, World War One was where a lot of modernizations of war came into play. Turned a really lovely meadow into a to a hell site. Filled with bullets. What about Wales? Wouldn't that get caught in the crossfire? Nah, it's England that they care about. When will this misery end? It 
So it's basically an angry Scot that um, wants revenge for um, invasion of England. Cool. Hmm. Yeah, you really are going to have a hard time uh, getting your son not to join the war. Well, I mean, it doesn't make it right, does it? I remember listening to a Horrible Histories um, audio that was narrated by the book's author, Terry Deary, that described um, the younger soldier who died in the, in the, um, in the war he was only 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you see what I mean about how this film calms down compared to um compared to golden circle at this point we were having bad cgi robot dogs i will say this though they are taking a bit of their time to get to the whole kingsman stuff which you know to be fair it's an origin story but one may wonder if this might have been just better off as being a world war one venture oh Okay, I'm sorry. It's a bit cute that they're going on about how killing is awful when the previous two Kingsman movies have been pretty murder-happy. I think it's more the murder of just innocent civilians and, like, people who were forcibly drafted into this kind of thing, not, like, killing somebody, you know, who's actually doing the harm. Honestly, that's how I read it anyway. If that's the case, then that makes more sense. I mean, it is war, so it's like... Largely, the people who are going to die are innocent. But, Dad, uh, I don't want to go out and do the war on my own. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he, he does want to see the whole world. <laughs> yeah, and that's one way to. <laughs> and also, this is one way to kill somebody. Put poison in a sherbet lemon. I thought it was a very tiny macaron fist, at first. All right, fine, I won't join the bloody war. Now please make sure my son doesn't die. If only it were that easy to cure poison in real life. It was probably a poison meant to paralyze and make him look like he was dying as opposed to actually kill him. Oh. Hmm. 
No. <laughs> oh boy. This is a private conversation, sir. Can I go to the war? No. Please, no. Please, no. Please, no. Hmm. And now we're on the boat. Oh, boy. I Wait a minute. Is Morton the mole? And is that like a bomb? Well, we'll have to see, won't we? I mean, I guess it proves one thing. You could be as tough as nails, but on the sea, damn. <laughs> Ah, uh, reading about the battlefield deaths on the war front. Are either of you two seasick? Because it's pretty shit. Uh, been a while since I've been on a boat. I've never gotten seasick when I've been on a boat, so I don't think so. The granted, I've never been on like a cruise. Oh dear. Well, shit. Well, they're doomed. And you're about to be added to that casualty. <sighs> May God forgive me. Well, well, um, the situation's getting worse by the minute. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll say this. It's a good movie so far, but it does feel like it's taking its time with actually, you know, <laughs> connecting to Kingsman in that regard. Like, this feels like it has more to do with World War One than it does with the origins of the Kingsman. And well, I mean, it was after World War One. Hmm? The Kingsman was founded after World War One. because remember what Harry said, it all... All the rich people who founded it, all their heirs had died, so they had to put their money to good use somewhere. Exactly. My point, though, is like, well, um, I do wonder how much this actually has to do with being a Kingsman movie as opposed to a really good World War I movie. Put it this way, what's happening in this movie is more the events that leaded up to the creation of the Kingsman. Which, you yeah. know, that's fine. It's just that, again, um, one of my friends did mention that one of his problems with this movie was like, well, it doesn't feel that much like a Kingsman movie. Which, to be fair, if you paid to see a Kingsman movie, you might be disappointed with that. So I've... Uh, okay, so I think this is one of those cases where maybe this movie could have gone under, like, a different name or different premise as opposed to suggesting that... Well, oh, that's the thing, Jover. Um, this film... This wasn't its um, original name. That explains a lot. What was its name supposed to be? It was originally Kingsman the Great Game. So still... I feel like that makes even less sense. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Again, like... I, I, let me put it like this. Because there isn't really a game-like element to this. Let me put it like this. 
I think, like, this is a pretty good World War I movie, but as a Kingsman oh. movie... Ah, of course. Is this a little more Kingsman for you? I guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> Although not by name, just yet. Yeah, yeah, it's called, um, it's called the... Huh, imagine. If it's all just an act. That includes the loyal butler. And it kind of explains the relationship dynamic we've seen of these three up to this point. It's like why they're so buddy-buddy despite their respective roles. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'll give him credit, you know? At first they make you think it's gonna be the cliché, oh, the father doesn't want his son getting in on the action stuff, but no, it turns out that's literally just a character he was playing. Yeah, nope. You know, I thought it was gonna. I thought it was gonna try and uh, reach over and um, swallow the thing. Under the radar. Yeah, but Rasputin is. Um... An interesting individual? Yes. Yes, England is doomed. Never mind about Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. We'll just be chilling over here with some tea, you know. This is your problem. Sure, sure. And then um, um, what if the Germans get over into your country? What would you do then? Sheep will take care we'll of figure that out when we get there. But of course. Plenty of tried up to this point. Yeah. So yeah, as I was saying earlier, um, the film started production in January 2019, while Fox was still its own entity. Halfway through the production, um, the Fox-Disney deal officially went through, so the film ended production as a Disney movie. Neat. Disney movies getting brave. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I reckon if we're ever going to get another Kingsman movie, it'll probably be, um, at best, it'll probably be a uh, Disney Plus exclusive. Oh? Might, probably, I don't know. Is it because that this movie didn't do so well at the box office? Yeah, probably. Okay, so, Ahmed, so far this movie is fine. That said, I will say it, it it does seem to lack the heights that the first Kingsman movie had. I'm guessing um I'm guessing Vaughn's thought process was, well shit, people people thought I was people thought I was way too over the top in the previous film. So he just tried to make a more I wanna say for lack of a better term, karma movie. Mm-hmm. 
We've still some of the elements sprinkled in there. It definitely has some of the yeah, elements I mean, I mean here. we still got some of the more cartoony characters, like uh, Rasputin. Which, yeah, from what I've heard, this is apparently the character that most people like the most in this movie. I mean, he had a trailer. I mean, I mean, I mean Disney released a video in the lead-up to the film's release um, of him doing a dance. Oh, yeah, like, they were really hyping up Rasputin. Which apparently is a bit weird in hindsight of a thing that happens in this movie from what I've heard, but that's not to spoil. I thought you British were polite. Oh yes, we are. To those who deserve it. Uh, how do you do? Hmm. Or both. Yeah, yeah, it could be both. Oh, this guy's so awesome, but he could eat me. What a wonderful hobby. Interesting dinner conversation. Yeah. <laughs> well, kid, you wanted <laughs> to see the world, and by God, you're going to see the world one way or another. <laughs> Dang. <sighs> what a wonderful dinner host. Makes out right in front of the guest. I mean... No one's going to say anything, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> this is very forward for a formal dinner. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he, at least uh, private, yeah. How nice. Yes, we are getting very forward here. Yes. <laughs> All right, um, what did I miss exactly? Uh, Rasputin essentially hitting on everyone. <laughs> yes, you, you missed the proposition. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, Voldemort in his underwear. That's all you need to imagine to no longer be scared of him. Or if you're James Bond, just imagine him in his underwear.
Oh yeah, they're gonna try and poison him with the cake. <laughs> I mean, they didn't even mention that it was poison, but yeah, I had a feeling. You know, as someone who really likes Bakewell Tots, this put me off for a while. The sorry if you get Bakewell Tart. Hmm? Well, not the Tsar, sorry, Rasput how the way Rasputin eats it. <laughs> yeah, the way he eats it put me off them. Oh, so does that mean it tastes like crap to you? Or I guess not. No, Bakewell Tart's very nice. It's just he's gonna ruin it. Yeah, I mean, look at him. <sighs> yeah, for a book, he's a very picky eater. So, like, what was the idea? Um, all right, Reese. In order for you to be Rasputin, <clears throat> we need you to do... Well, you know that crazy actor guy? Yeah, uh... What we want you to do is act like you're Jared Leto. Only a oh. bit more sane. <laughs> uh, if I didn't know better, I'd almost think we were seeing a porno here. <laughs> well, it's the closest Disney will get to making one. Uh oh. <laughs> well, crud. The very cold water. Are you quite sure? It'll wake you up a bit. <laughs> or dead. One of those two. Ah, <laughs> that's how that works. You take a bit of poison to counteract a lot of it. What the hell? <gasps> Okay. 
Well, we get our first big action scene of the movie. With the uh, classic choreography. Yeah. So there we are. If you ever wanted to watch um, Dr. Connors fight Shazam, here's your movie. I'm just imagining now the Disney executives watching this film. There's a lot of licking in it. Eh, whatever. The kids won't notice. You know, Don't for be... as much as you learned in history, you didn't know he was a dancer. I don't think the licks man would, um, or the king's lick would have made a good title. Yep. A lot of licking and a lot of dancing. Ow. Well, shit. Oh, don't tell me the black man dies first. Nice That was shot. a very Voldemort yell right there. <laughs> oh, come on! Got with only one bullet in it. <laughs> Shoot, I'm not gonna lie, with all this fighting, I feel like Rasputin should have been the final boss of this movie, honestly. Yeah, oh this my does go god! A bit. He is literally humping his head. Or his eyeballs, because it looks like you're about to gouge those out, too. Uh. <laughs> I mean, either way. Wow, I mean, yeah, yeah, Rasputin is so cool, but in this movie, he can take on two on one. And you have to go back and explain that your Russian trip involved fighting Rasputin in your underwear. Yeah. yeah. You know, like you do. Yeah, we're talking about Siori. Um, Tis but yeah, a scratch. It's always happened um, when it, whenever people went to Russia in the old days. So he legit healed his leg. Yeah. Are you really sure he's dead this time? But what about your, uh, what about your loyal butler? Ahem! <clears throat> oh, son Yeah. Yeah, this man refuses to die. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. You need some horse tranquilizers. Are we sure that actually killed him? I think that one yep. did, yes. It was killed by the maid. And there's Rasputin dead. Ow. Dang. So is the idea that we go for all these different bosses to reach it to the final guy? Hmm. Oh my god. Ven Lennon.
Now please put your sword away. Hmm. Yeah, oh. it's a bit sad, but um, here, happy birthday, comrade. You killed Rasputin. Have a celebration cake. Interesting birthday. Very interesting. Saved your father from getting something, a few things done to him by Rasputin. And I guess now his leg is healed. Huh. Ergo, that's our excuse for all the butt kicking he can do later in this movie without a cane now. I mean, he might still use the cane as a weapon. Yeah. Now you get a bit of range. He still wants to go despite all that. Pity that. Happy birthday! Yeah! <laughs> so, um... Yeah, now what do we do? Well, I mean, he didn't get his blessing, but, um... Still gonna try and go anyway. Mm-hmm. Hi, can I join the army, please? Oh, uh, yes, dear, sir. He gives it to his secretary to give to his secretary. I'm surprised he survived the ship sinking. I mean, he gets blessing, but... 
when he's joining the army anyway. Uh -huh. And there's your full metal jacket inspiration. And of course, you know, being um yeah, that's one thing I noticed when in regards to pictures of um army guys during World War One, they had they had um most of them had mustaches. Hmm. The Zimmerman letter. Wow, American um, American weapons were so advanced uh, back then, were they? Uh, well, America did have a knack for really helping to turn the tide in world wars. Hmm. Eh? What does he mean? He's not sure that's cricket? I've not heard that British saying before. I haven't either, to be honest. Oh! I was actually going to turn to you for that one, but, uh... Ah, President Woodrow Wilson. Oh, Statesman! There you go! Yeah, there's the Statesman there, friends, and, uh, hey... And hey, there's another lesson um, Vaughn learned from the uh, previous movie. He doesn't make the president into a complete caricature of somebody. <laughs> subtle. Very subtle. <laughs> Ooh, he's pissed. So, uh, yeah, after all that, he has to go all the way back to where he came from. <laughs> but, um... Ooh. Mm. Well, hope he goes back to London. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. Um... <sighs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Feature film reference. <laughs> oh, really? Trained in England. Ain't that a ting? Oops, someone's at the door. Yes, yes it does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, about that. Oh boy. No kidding. Oh boy. Yep. Oh. So yeah, his son played a um, switcheroo. A King's Cross of sorts. Yeah, okay. Um, there's a certain part at the end of this which I was a little bit... Um, I wouldn't say miffed at, just a bit confused by. Although, I, I get it in the wider context of the series, at least. Hmm. Well, he lost his, um, he lost his moustache. Oh, wow. You get there and already things are going up shit creek. But hey, um they got a um they got a spy running back with some important information. Well oh. shit. Oh boy. If you can get okay. all of him. All right, so you got one volunteer. Um Yeah, sure. Well, I mean if you don't volunteer yourself, they'll just pick you. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like a very uh, it's like being picked for the most brutal game of tag you can think of. <laughs> I 
This is more like hot potato, though. Uh, yeah. Are you not implying that everyone is not fighting over the honor to possibly die? In this case, they're fighting just to um, ensure they get a bit of um, the guy's vital information. If they can find what's left of him, uh oh. Yeah, so they just gotta be. Just gotta be careful now. Uh oh. You know, when I first saw this bit, I thought it was going to be a reference to the um, December 1914 armistice. Yeah, the bit where the um, where the Brit where the British and the Germans decided to um, call a temporary truce on Christmas and uh, play a game of football together. Mm -hmm. So we'll just do it hand to hand. Yeah. Which means the knife training actually will come in handy. I mean, hey, the Germans were at least nice enough to tell them that there were bombs there, so... And, yeah, there could be a lot of noise made, so... Do this. Mind you, uh, the only real issue is that because, I mean, it's obviously it's at night and it's dark, because but in some instances it, it, their suits get so bloody, so muddy, it kind of gets a bit difficult to tell who's who at points. I mean, to be fair, you're trying to kill us, so... Yeah, because, you know, war. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, normally, Kingsman action is very loud and bombastic, so to see a um, relatively quiet action scene is um, different. Again, I can see what some people mean with this maybe not feeling the most Kingsman-esque. Don't get me wrong. I don't think it's a bad movie. I do... The more we see this movie, though, the more I do wonder if it really had any business calling itself Kingsman, because, like... Sure, we it's get... It's not called Kingsman, it's called The King's Man. Well, you know what I mean, though, still, like, well... We have a bit of the whole Secret Service uh -oh. thing tied in, and oh, snap... Well, shit, now they gave away their position. Hey, now it's all lit up like Christmas. But don't worry, Conrad is there to... Sorry, not, not Conrad, um, totally that Scottish guy. As I see, he learned the video game logic of you keep running, you'll be fine. Uh -huh. Naturally. Oh. Well, you wanted to go to the front. Hey, that guy who was running away. Or trying to get to them with the intelligence. He dived into the pit to fake his death. Shame about his leg, but...
I gotta say, he's taking his um, he's taking the lack of a leg really well. Guess he's. I just mean, if you go into war, all. I guess it's kind of a. You sign up knowing this might happen to you. Yeah, no, I mean, I, mean, I, thought, I thought he'd be in immense pain or something. You're coming back with me, mate. Don't worry, guys. I've got it. And I'm sure the Germans won't fire on you when they see you. Maybe, um, maybe the Germans are tired. I don't know where they are. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm surprised um, in this context of this movie that one thought to do that first. Get rid of the machine gunner. It's almost there. Sure, it would be a shame if we had a last minute upset. Come on. Oh. Ow. Ow. But they got back. Hey, they're back, they're back in it, at least. <laughs> no, he's alive, don't worry. Amazing. I legit thought they were gonna kill him at the last second. He's dead. Archie Reed. Oops. <laughs> Oh! Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Killed just like that over a misunderstanding. I mean, it's an understandable reaction. And you nearly got to say his name. Is that what they're calling it? So yeah, after, so yeah, he um he got through Rasputin, and the heavy artillery German fire, only to be killed by a Scotsman because of a misunderstanding. 
Ah, that's World War One for you. A lot of the deaths were incredibly stupid that way. Yeah, yeah, that that's, that that was a bit. I was a bit confused over at first when I saw it. Him dying yeah, just like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I mean, it does happen in war. To be fair. You know, I was fine with it, but I, I definitely understand it's kind of like a whole, you didn't die to this, but you died to that. You yeah, know, okay. like, I, I get it, but I I, I mean, don't think this took me out of the movie for it. I mean, it gets shot in the head, so. So, uh, yeah, quite a departure from um, fighting Rasputin at this point. Yeah, again, I don't think it's bad per se, but some of this really does feel not particularly befitting of a Kingsman movie. Mind you. We've got 45 minutes left. Mind you, I'm not going to write off the movie as of this, but I do feel like what this movie lacks is focus. It's not bad, but I do feel like it, it lacks a certain amount of focus, which makes it feel like it has pieces from different movies, if you get what I mean. Although I'll admit, I kind of had a feeling that Conrad was going to die, given how they do mention how the Kingsman was founded. Yeah, because you know they said all their um, all their heirs had died. Yep, when he was forced to abdicate. The Russian Revolution. Ooh. So at least Comrade um, didn't die for nothing. But hold on, there's still like a good amount of movie left, so I guess there's more. But we still have our main villain. He's gonna kill him for that, isn't he? <laughs> huh. Uh, 
some Matahari. You know, it'd be funny if it turns out that the main bad guy is actually the guy who killed Conrad. He's uh, <laughs> no. So, yeah, um, he's in such a state. Um, yeah. There's uh, there's none left in that bottle, my dude. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I failed to. Both of you. Hmm. Oh. I wonder if they told him the circumstances of how he died. I wonder. Oh, God, if he like, knew. Yeah, that would make it worse. I mean, it'd be one thing if you were killed in an actual fight, but being killed over a misunderstanding with a, with a Brit. By one of their own, yeah. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. What? 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 You're telling me you didn't expect that. I mean, I saw some sparks, but really? That? I remember when I saw this pretty much from the start of the movie with their first conversation, I was like, oh, they have a thing. I see that thing has blossomed. Anyway, he snapped out of it. Cleans up nice, don't he? Of course, he's a kingsman. Well, okay, okay, he'll be, he will be a kingsman. Uh huh. I think it was wise not to follow whatever drunk orders he gave.
I mean, could you imagine if he had massive weapons and he ordered it while drunk? Oh, God. Yeah, honestly, you know, when he was in that drunken stupor, I thought it was going to be like, you know, those things you build up, but in your lowest moment you lose them because of your grief. I thought he was going to lose his, um, I thought he was going to have, I thought his leg was going to go dodgy again. Hmm. Hmm. Oh okay, god, I just realized guys. What? Yeah. You know the last time that um that Ralph Fiennes played a um played a really British gentleman in a big budget movie? Alfred and the Lego Batman movie? That had nothing to do with that had nothing to do with um Lego or James Bond. What? He was in the Avengers. Huh. Oh yeah. Yeah, he plays a character just as posh here as he did there. So, another historical figure, Matahari, I guess, apparently has some dirt on the president, which is keeping him from entering the war. Well, oh, shit. Oh, uh, hello. <laughs> uh huh. Huh. Of course, a sex tape. Are you concentrating or what? You idiots, that's Kashmir too. Oh wait, it is Kashmir one. Sorry, I'm seeing double. Yep, yep, the Kashmir goat, um, who is um, unfortunate, who are unfortunately um, at the moment victims of a very angry Scotsman. Huh. You know, maybe he shouldn't have thought to have done stuff from a place where oh, they where it's their literal only breeding ground. And welcome to the final act of the movie. Mm hmm. Oh, so this is where the parachute was invented. Or at the very least, um, moved on a bit more. Um... I love his face throughout all of this. <laughs> Exactly. Am 
we all exactly. know the British hate bad form. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you have a height problem, too? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, although nowadays, in our case, bad form would be your favorite football teams on a losing streak. Has that uh, happened? Oh my gosh! Just like in Lego Batman. Okay, Rope, I'm counting on you. If only this were a Warner Brothers movie. <laughs> Wow, this is off to a wonderful start, I see. Yeah, now you're stuck in the wing. You, you know, when people say waiting in the wings, I don't think this is what they meant. I think he's got the wrong idea of what that meant. I thought, I thought he was going to accidentally stab himself in his bad leg again. That would suck. Don't worry. He can go back to Rasputin to get it fair. Oh. Okay, now you just gotta land this right. It's alright, he made it. What's, you know, it would sure suck if he landed wrong. Don't worry, I'm gonna make it. Oh. Oh, come on! Some very confused mountain goats. <laughs> yeah. The mountain goats control the wind, I guess. Oh, how nice of them to wake him up. Wait. Why did that yeah. one goat just come down to do that? He's very nice. Goats are stupid. They're nice, but stupid. So yes. would you say that they're smarter or stupider than sheep? I doubt uh, it. I they always get themselves stuck in barbed wire. Ah. Like, if you're walking in certain parts of Wales, it is not uncommon to have to rescue a sheep. I can't tell if that was him trying to help or just taunting him. Yes, do as the goat does. How's that for life advice, Jeroy? The goats are showing him the way. He now knows the way. Wonderful. Oh, there's a few of you. Man, this cliffside has it out for him. Oh, come on! <laughs> Wow, his greatest enemy, one-horned goat. <laughs> now his greatest ally. He has earned his respect. <sighs> okay, 
I'll admit that was not a sequence I was expecting, but all right. Excuse me. He hasn't been virtually run all the way there, does he? Whoa. Ha. He got a heavy. He likes to yell, I see. You know yeah. that guy who swapped the who who um who Conrad switched places with earlier? Yeah. Yeah. The actual Archie Reed was played by Aaron Taylor Johnson. Huh. Hmm. Been a while since we've seen Aaron Taylor Johnson in some live action stuff. What is this guy, Rasputin 2.0? <laughs> He's built different. And the um, U.S. ambassador to Britain was played by Stanley Tucci. Hmm, neat. See, it was just a scratch. <laughs> I am a kingsman. Hopefully. Oh boy. Going up? Well, at least we'll get down. Just make sure you get the negative from there. Good luck getting down now. You think? You know, if falling in that uh, makeshift lift didn't kill him, uh, that guy falling on him certainly killed him. <laughs> Don't worry, he's got the negative. What, are they Hydra? Uh, yeah, yeah, because Baron Zemo. <laughs> like, seriously, that was a full-on Hydra reference. Not 
Knock at a knock first? Yeah, British, how rude. Oh. Keeping his face in shadow a lot, I see. Now, how do you know that? I mean, the Duke of Oxford's got to be quite the famous person. He's so unapologetically Scottish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait till I tell you about his actor, though, Shiroi. <laughs> Not actually Scottish? I'll wait till we reveal who he is. Our boats, are we? Oh, is that where it came from? Oh my god, it's... Morton? Yep. So, I was kind of right when I thought that he might be a sleeper agent back on the ship. I just didn't know how right I was. Not even a sleeper agent, just, like, literally the head honcho. So, um, yes, Walter was the main villain, and, and so, yes, like I said before, Shiori, um, um, Matthew Good's from Exeter. Hmm. Where's that? About as far away from Scotland as you could get. Yeah. <laughs> it's right near the bottom southwest of England. Huh. It's quite funny considering the motivations of this uh, character that you have an Englishman playing him. Yeah. Wow. So we end with an actual sword fight. I will give him this, the fight choreography is pretty great. I mean, it helps that on like the first, on like, sorry, on, on like the second Kingsman movie, I can at least see most of it. Okay, he's not the best villain in the series, but um, he at least has a motivation, unlike... Oh, okay, a, a decent motivation, unlike... Um, the bad unlike whatever the, Poppy. Unlike whatever the one in Kingsman 2 was trying to be, yeah. Yeah, like, on the one hand, I... Okay, I can kind of get how people would have preferred if Rasputin was the main bad guy, because don't get me wrong, this guy is kind of over the top, but 
Rasputin was just, you know, in a whole nother level. That's gonna leave a mark. It's like, they could have done a lot with Rasputin because, like, I mean, not just in the movie, but in real life, he was quite the individual. <laughs> yeah. Fuck this gentleman shite. I love that one. <laughs> Boop. That looked like it hurt. <laughs> yes, he's still alive. <laughs> As I was see this movie, actually, Siri. No, uh, when I went to see this, I saw it with my mother. Oh, okay. She's seen the other two, though, so we will watch this one together at some point. Oh, uh, did she like Golden Circle? No. Ah. Uh. Oh, ow. But... Oh, crap. Unfortunately for you. Maybe he's okay. Yep. <laughs> also, how fitting. One of the goats that he very much so abused was what helped do him in. He is the uh, goat character of this movie. <laughs> huh. Funny how be life fair. works. The I mean, to be fair, it's probably easier to um, heal from a bullet than it is to heal any potential problem from a bullet. Yeah, how are you going to get down? And that's the end of the movie. They're still up there when they starve to death. Uh, they only have enough goats to last for a couple of weeks. Your secret is here. Your secret ends here, sorry. Huh. Yeah. Now no one has to see my secret. <laughs> <sighs> well, that's quite a shot to end on there. Victory! Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. 
is that how the um is that how the royal family got massacred? A photo shoot? Apparently. Yeah, I gotta say, this film really loves um taking the shoot in photo shoots. Yeah. And making it literal. <laughs> <laughs> the whole Romanov thing, what is known is that they were killed while in a cellar, apparently. The absolute contents of that event aren't completely up there, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Nah, imagine that. And there you go, that's how the kings were reformed. Yay! King Arthur. Mm -hmm. Dad. Dad. <laughs> uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson's. Ironic that the actual king is not, uh, King Arthur. Oh yeah, that the started the uh, tradition of them drinking after someone died. After credit scene? I'm just checking now. Uh, yes. There's a there's a mid credit scene. And what about at the end of the credits? No, I don't think there is one. Oh, Mark Millar, your favorite, Jova. Well, yeah, he's the one who originally made the Kingsman comic book. So, yeah. Hmm. I'll admit, that was better than I expected it to be. It wasn't perfect, mind you, and it still does have a bit of an identity issue, but... Definitely leagues above the Golden Circle. I know that's not saying much, but... No, honestly, for what this movie did right, I legit enjoyed it. It is kind of a shame that Pedro was put off with the franchise enough. I think he might have enjoyed this one. Yeah, I don't particularly is, blame is, him, though, because Golden Circle was that bad. It, there is, it there really is, was. There is no post credit scene, I should say. Yeah, um, I do There's agree. Th I do agree, though. Like, well, look, for anyone who didn't want to go see this movie based off of the advertisement, I can't blame them because I'm not going to act like the trailer has made this movie look bad, but it didn't make it seem particularly interesting. And like I said, even with this movie, there are still a few caveats because, look, if you're looking for a traditional Kingsman, this still is not the place to look for it. Oh, it has elements of that, but it feels like it's mixed in with an overall oh. World War I film. And oh, here we what go. do we have here? Oh boy. Dun dun dun! <laughs> so in this version, Adolf Hitler's the one who killed the Romanovs, and he's the same guy from the photo shoot earlier. 
Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and suddenly a rap song? What? Yeah, this is where I left the cinema. <laughs> I'm guessing you weren't I... a fan of the song? Well, I mean, um, not most, most rap music isn't really my cup of tea. Huh. I mean, not, not all, but... So, um, um, since I think, Joe, have you pretty much given your final thoughts at this point? Well, okay, so to summarize my final thoughts, it's a movie that I can definitely enjoy, but I do see the problems with it. Like, let me put it like this. This feels like, okay, if Golden Circle, ironically enough, is the drug overdose, this feels like the person coming back from rehab, but not to 100% yet. Like, it does feel like they fixed a lot of the problems from Golden Circle. They didn't fix, per se, everything, though. And like I said, it, I feel like this movie's biggest issue is that it does have a bit of identity issue where it feels like half the time it's a Kingsman movie, whereas the other half of the time it's really just a World War I movie overall. And mind you, a good World War I movie, but still, it doesn't feel the most focused on being a Kingsman film, so... I can kind of see why this has a run tomato score of 42%. It's a good film. It's not overall, per se, a great Kingsman film, though, which, let's be honest, given the fact that it's a prequel, they were clearly trying to do that. Now, that being said, the acting and action are impeccable here and there. I do agree. I feel like it would have been cooler if Rasputin was the actual main bad guy, because... Man, after Rasputin dies, suddenly we go into the whole World War One shtick until we get back to the more over-the-top zany stuff and whatnot. Or hell, make it focused on fighting all these historical guys as the boss sites or whatnot. Like, we had Matahari as well, and I guess eventually we're gonna have Adolf Hitler in what would be a sequel, Lenin as well, but... Um, it feels like after the whole Rasputin thing, they go, okay, we don't want to go too over the top, so then they overcompensate by suddenly going all dead to the wall serious and whatnot, and yeah, it's a bit weird like that. That said, overall, I consider this a fine movie, and it does give me some hope for the future. That said, though, again, I'm not exactly going to blame people for not going to see this, because... Okay, even ignoring the fact that Golden Circle really, really damaged the franchise's name and standing, I'm not going to act like this movie was really the best movie to see that month, compared to the likes of West Side Story and, you know, this little independent film by the name of uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. You may not have heard of it. <laughs> nah, sounds pretty obscure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would never have heard of it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, again, this is a fine movie, and it, it is definitely an improvement over Golden Circle. That being said, it's not the ultimate victory we were hoping for, but maybe that will come in the future. Uh, Shiori, sure, um, would you like to go next? Uh, sure. Uh, well, first of all, um, uh, I uh, like we didn't stick around for the credits uh, when we saw the movie, so uh, uh, because like my mother doesn't tend to like want to do that, so that was my first time seeing that <laughs> little scene right there. Huh. Uh, so yeah, uh, sequel setup, cool. Um, but yeah, uh, about the the movie itself though. I'm, per I'm perfectly fine with it as a Kingsman movie because the three movies have been so inconsistent. I feel like they're still struggling, you know, a little bit to try to get it right. The first movie, though, seems to be the one that they should go for. And I think they were nearly there with this because it, it is very serious for a lot of it. But towards the, la of ha the latter half, the more ridiculous things were starting to get a little more frequent. So I feel like if they did that a bit more, people wouldn't have had the issues that they did. I, I do understand, though. Um, and, you know, I don't agree with the Rotten Tomatoes score, but I can also understand that, uh, you know, people were so uh, bummed out by the Golden Circle that uh, they, they people would be a bit harsher coming into this one. Yeah, so. like... 
Well, I definitely understand the the criticism, and even if I don't particularly agree with it, like I I really enjoyed this movie. I do feel like if this movie had come out in a timeline where Golden Circle hadn't been as bad as it would have been, people might have been softer on this because you know being a prequel and whatnot. The thing is like, oh, because Golden Circle was that bad, people really did need a proper Kingsman movie to bring things back into form. Yeah. I mean, the film's release date also kept getting delayed because, um... And again, of all the times they chose to settle the data and it was against... I mean, pretty big competition, let's be honest. Which is interesting because technically the because the film was produced by Marvel Studios, so um, so they were competing with themselves. Uh, well, themselves in a production sense, but um, on a releasing sense, they were competing with Sony. Well, you but know, yeah, in general, like I th I thought the music I thought the music was great. Yeah. The characters uh, were also great. Like even even more some of the more minor ones and. Uh, Though I, I do also agree that maybe um, it would have been a better choice m making Rasputin the villain because there is a lot you could have done. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it is the most memorable part of the movie for a reason for a lot of people. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not sure what else. Uh, what else to put in? Like. Um, I do. I do think it was a pretty good origin story, like right, for uh, for this franchise, because uh, we saw sprinkles of what the of of what the organization would become throughout it. And yeah, I overall, I think it was a very good movie. But I do understand again why people may have been miffed with parts of it. And the origins of Manners Make of Man, it all came about because the one of the founders of Kingsman. Um, for for the sub uh, crazy Scottish guy, he's, he's some crazy Scottish guy. So he thought, hmm, that sounds cool. He's like, oh, he, he's he's trying to kill me, but you know, that's actually not bad. Yeah. Like, I'll take that. And yeah. hey, you know, if he's dead, I don't exactly have to pay him copyright on that. Yeah, it's yeah. like you're stealing it out of spite. So that's that's cool. I mean, he tried to kill me, so um, and plus he nearly tried to bring our country to ruin. So. Yeah, it, uh, but yeah, it, it, but I'm done with my final thoughts. So, whoops. Uh, yeah. As for me, um, yeah, you know, that's, that's interesting. Uh, I only saw the film a few months ago because um, because of Disney's um, new policy of releasing films straight to Disney Plus, like the, over a month after it comes out. So this is probably the shortest I've had to wait to do a commentary of a movie with you guys after its theatrical release. So that's something. Um, as for the film itself, yes, yeah, leagues better. It's leagues ahead of um, of Golden Circle because, um, like I said, it feels like Matthew Vaughn got off like got off his weird sugar high from the second movie and was like, "Oh, um, you know, maybe I should try and calm down for the next one." I mean, I know Kingsman is inherently a bit over the top, but that's the thing. It was a bit over the top, not annoyingly so. Yeah. Um, so we still get the um, fun, wacky characters. Like we still get Rasputin, and um, yeah, we still got some really fun main characters like Ralph Fiennes and his son. You know, with his tragic end. Mm hmm. And um, okay, if there's one thing I do agree with, um, it is kind of weird going from a going from a giant giant esque sword fight with Rasputin to how horrible World War One is. Yeah, again, I feel like that is probably this movie's biggest problem. It feels like it wanted to be two different movies. It couldn't pick between one, so it just messed them all in together. Yeah, that's 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 the biggest issue. It is a bit inconsistent with the tone. I mean it's not as inconsistent with it as Kingsman 2, but there's still <laughs> a lot of work to be done. Like, okay, I'll give Kingsman to this. It always did feel like it was going for the tone of Kingsman. Mind you, it still is a worse movie. But I will give Kingsman to this that it did feel like it had more focus on what it wanted to be. Whereas this film feels like, again, at one point it wants to be wacky Kingsman. Other bouts, 
dark, grim series. And I'm not going to act like Kingsman never did have serious moments in it. But again, those serious moments felt like they flowed with the movie. Like, it didn't feel like things were getting uber serious dark by the film standards. Whereas this one... Yeah, again, you followed up all the silly Rasputin stuff with that grim dark stuff. I'm not saying you can't ever do that, but I don't feel like Kingsman is the film to do that in. But at the very least, it's more, um, it's more entertaining by being less over the top, if you know what I mean. That I can agree with. Like, this is one that definitely knows how to restrain itself better. Albeit maybe a little too much in the opposite direction of Golden Circle, but at least it wasn't, you know... It didn't get to the point where it ruined the movie, like with Golden Circle. Maybe yeah. they were also just a little bit afraid, you know, to make it more like the original because of the reception of Golden Circle, and they just ended up accidentally dialing it back a bit too much. I do well, I mean, definitely get that feeling. I mean... I mean, I'll be fair, um, I can slightly forgive this movie for that, though, because at the very least it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have that awkward Glastonbury scene. Oh, that scene was so bad, you guys fell into silence. <laughs> I'm literally trying to remember which scene that was. It was the bit where the movie made a big triumphant deal about how he put a, ca how he oh, put a tracking God. device in that woman's vagina. With the music and everything. Yeah, that's probably one of the most misjudged scenes I've ever seen. But, yeah. um... But, uh, but yeah, this movie at least does a decent enough job of standing on its own two feet as a um, World War One movie, and, to a lesser extent, a decent Kingsman movie. And if they keep going on this route, I mean, if they make another film after this, um... Well, um, we'll just have to see, won't we? Maybe... Maybe the next film will come out um, during an era which is not either A, against a giant juggernaut like Spider-Man No Way Home, plus the, the pandemic's calmed down a lot more. And, and it didn't get its release date shifted about constantly. That was another thing as well. So, uh, yeah, that was The King's Man. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We're not entirely sure when the next one's going to come out, if at all. Mm -hmm. But... Um, Whenever it is, um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see you then. I will say this. If this was really the end, then it's not the worst note to go out on. Yeah. All right, then. Goodbye. See ya. See ya.